Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Scott Schell, and I am a specialist in the Germanic languages. I have a PhD in Germanic linguistics from UC Berkeley, an MA in linguistics from Wayne State University, and a BA in German. And today what I would like to talk to you about is part 9 of the Old Saxon Personal Names series. And so like in my other videos, I'm going to go ahead and just explain what the Old Saxon speaking area is. And uh, it's also important to bear in mind again that these names are dated to uh, between about 700 and 1000 CE. Anything beyond 1000 CE, um, you're kind of approaching something that develops later from Old Saxon. And so, like usual, I will go ahead and give you the attested form of the name. I will then go ahead and give you a reconstructed form, a literal translation, and then how the name is written in runes. So our first name today is going to be Reganwulf. Reganwulf. This literally means reed, or council, and wolf. The gender is not actually stated in the source, However, like I said in you know, various videos before dealing with personal names, the word wolf is actually masculine across the Germanic languages. So in this case, we can safely assume that this name was meant for a man. So this is a name, of course, that is meant for someone who offers good counsel or read, um, and it is someone who has the qualities of a wolf. But again, like I explained in my previous video, the word Regan here uh, can mean like advisors, but can also sort of mean fates or gods. So this could literally be like a divine advisor wolf sort of name. Uh, but again, the divine advisor aspect is sort of reserved for the old Norse gods, like in the word the Ginregan. Um, but it, so in this case, it's actually just probably meant for like a true sort of drochten or some sort of a lord to give good counsel. So our second name today is going to be Rikdach. Rikdach. This is literally ruler day. Rik is actually directly related to English rich. So if you would like an even more literal translation, it would actually be rich day. But the semantics of this word uh, is really reserved for like a kingdom or someone who is a ruler. The Rik part in this name is actually related to Theodoric who was the Ostrogothic king who reigned from 475 to 526. He's also known as Thidric in the story of Thidric's saga. Our third name today is going to be Rikland. Rikland. This is literally ruler Linden, and this name was specifically recorded for a woman. So this name is for a ruler who possesses the qualities of a Linden, um, as I had explained in my previous video, of course, this extends to Linden spear shafts or even Linden shields, as mentioned in the Hildebrandt's lead. However, this name could also mean one who rules over the Linden trees. So our fourth name today is pretty interesting and unique. It's actually Hrim. Hrim. This is rhyme. Um, as in like frost that forms on objects. This name was specifically recorded for a male, um, and this is a very strange, rare name uh, that was recorded in the Old Saxon speech area. In fact, I've only found one attestation of it. The Hrim here is actually related to like the Old Norse Hrim Thorsar, or like the so-called frost giants, which as you see here, should probably be more appropriately called rhyme giants or even like the rhyme thurses actually so um that's something to really ponder because as we see in the edic sources the rhyme thurses are actually foes of the Asir gods so this is kind of an interesting name uh that you would you would see here again because of the whole like frost giant frost thurs and now in this instance you have someone with that name rhyme or hrim Our fifth name today is going to be Runyer. Runyer. This is a very Odinic name, and it means literally rune spear. So the gender is not actually specified in the source. However, the word Yer is a consistent masculine noun across the Germanic languages. So in this case, it has to be a masculine noun, and it was 
definitely meant for a man when this name was recorded. This name literally is for someone who possesses a spear and embodies the mystery, but of course we can go beyond that and look at it as almost even like a name for a uh, rune master, if you will, or some sort of like rune seeker, uh, some sort of magician name. So of course this name does echo Odin hanging on the tree, and if you are not familiar with that, which I would assume 99% of my audience is familiar with that, uh, you should review stanzas 138 through 139 and Hothamol in the Poetic Era. That is the famous scene where Odin says, Vetek atekek vin gamedial nechter alar niyu, geir yunda varuk given odni, sjalv, sjalvam mer, all the me the ermangi vet, Quarstan of Rotom Ren, the Tlevi Mixelu Nave of Hortnicky, Nuste Ek Nether, Namek Bruna, a Pandi Nam, Felagafter Tava. And so in English, I know that I hung on a windy tree for nine long nights, wounded by the spear and given to Odin, myself to myself, on that tree of which no one knows from where its roots runs. They gave me no bread nor drinking horn. I looked down, I took up the runes, wailing I took them, and then I fell back from there. Our sixth name today is going to be Runeheri. Runeheri. This is literally Rune Host. The gender is not specifically listed in the source, however this is a what they call a Ya-stem masculine noun in all of the Germanic languages, so it must have been for a man. So this is a name for someone who rides with the host and embodies the mystery or the runes. This would be a strong name for someone who displays strong Odinic qualities. Uh, the connection of rune plus heri or host is not only a name for a follower of Woden, but really a name for the most dedicated of runers. Our seventh name today is going to be Seolind. Seolind. This is literally Sea Linden, and this name was recorded specifically for a woman. This name could actually even be tied to Freya in the north, or even Frau Holle throughout Germany. Freya, for instance, is actually known as Mardol in the Attic sources. This literally means like the sea flourisher. Frau Holle, however, is similarly known as Diweisafrau, which means literally the white lady who is connected to lakes and fountains. For our eighth name today, we have Seowart. Seowart. This is literally sea warder or like sea guardian. Uh, the gender for this name is actually recorded in its Latinate form. Uh, that US right there tells us that it was meant for a man. So this is someone who's clearly connected to the sea. Um, perhaps there's some sort of like Germanic connection there to Ron or um, Northern, for example. Uh, but this is a name, obviously, that it, you know it was meant for one who was connected to the sea and even sort of protects it. Our ninth name today is going to be Sigibald. Sigibald. This is literally victory bold. And the Latinate ending here, again, in its recorded form, tells us that this was for a man. So this is a very strong warrior name. Uh, this is one who is clearly victorious and fearless. Uh, this is a strong Germanic name with references to, like, even Sigurd in the saga of the Volsungs, who is also known as Siefried in the Nibelungenlied. Even the word Sigidrochten is used for the name of the Christian god in the Halion, which literally means victory lord. But of course, something like Sigi Drochten, or victory lord, was an older Odinic epithet that was co-opted by Christianity. Our last name for today's video is going to be Sigimolt. Sigimolt. This is literally victory courage, and the original attestation of this name was actually female. However, Mold here, uh, the second part of the name, could be understood as either masculine or feminine in the greater Old Saxon speech area. 
So this name is for someone who has a strong heart or mind and obviously is victorious. It's very similar to the previous name uh, where it has this sort of like Sigurd Odinic uh, quality. It could be understood as someone who actually grants victory. Um, to that end, there could be some sort of connection between this name and like Sigurd Drifa uh, in Sigurd Drifomol in the Poetic Edda. That is the Valkyrie um, that initiates Sigurd into the runic mysteries. Uh, she is the one that Sigurd pursues when he uses Sleipnir to jump over the Ring of Fire and wake her from her deep sleep that was actually induced by Odin. All right, everyone. Well, that's all I have for you today uh, in this ninth installment. Uh, we're going to be wrapping this series up pretty soon. So uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And I will see you all soon. Take care.